All right, and welcome to this month's masterclass, um, which is a little bit different from what I normally do. But this month, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on aging gracefully and why looking younger or looking young for your age may be more important to your general health than you may think. So stay with me with this one because uh, it's a little bit complicated. So you know I'm a big fan of Botox. Most of people know that. Um, neurotoxin injections or anti-wrinkle injections um, because it's the one thing that I think virtually guarantees a more youthful appearance by smoothing out lines. And it's also quite preventative from further wrinkles appearing, which also improves how you age as you get older. So a lot of people have issues with anti-aging treatments like Botox or injectable treatments because they think, oh, you should age gracefully. You shouldn't tamper with your looks. But what if I were to tell you that looking younger was actually relevant to your general health? And this is something that may be not totally crazy. So before you think I'm a little bit crazy, let's just go through this and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of pick apart this concept. So as we all know, human beings are concerned with their appearance, um, some of them very deeply so. And as a dermatologist, I see the struggles um, of those people who have skin disease or a perceived skin disease, the struggles they have on a daily basis with what they look like and how they interact with society and how they live their lives. So I also have the privilege of helping them correct those problems. And I can see the extraordinary impact that managing those problems well and improving someone's appearance can have on all aspects of their lives. So, uh, for example, the premise of the TV show that I do for Channel 5, which is called Skin a &E, if some of you haven't seen it, um, now in its fourth season, uh, in that show, we highlight the kind of the immediate emotional change that can happen if, um, for example, I remove a lesion that's deforming, not life-threatening, but perhaps deforming on the face or the body, um, and how that really changes someone's quality of life. So a person's life can literally be transformed by making them appear to look better or how they feel about the way they look. However, luckily, the majority of people don't have one or two large disfiguring lesions. Um, they rather just are slowly aging. And so we're all getting older every day. And there's still a stigma attached to seeking anti-aging treatments. Um, but should we learn to age gracefully? Should we accept the wrinkles on our foreheads, the sun-induced pigmentation? the crepiness and laxity of our lower faces. Um, in the same way that we tell teenagers that acne vulgaris is part of, of normal growing up, um, should we also be approaching aging the same way? Like it's, it's a normal part of life. I would actually say that acne vulgaris is not a normal part of age of being a teenager. It is a skin disease and should be treated um, because if you don't treat it effectively, it can leave permanent scarring both uh, physically and emotionally. So, what if looking young was not only important for someone's mental health and self-esteem as they grow older, but also vital to biological health, as in your physical health? So we generally agree that some people age rapidly and some people age slowly. Most people look their age, but most of us can probably name someone who is older, who appears to be aging more slowly or sometimes more rapidly, in terms of physical appearance, like, oh, they look old for their age or they look young for their age. Obviously, this is a completely subjective assessment based on what we think someone of a certain age should look like. Um, but it is something that we talk about all the time. So, for example, it's often observed that U.S. presidents seem to age more rapidly during their term in office than would expect be expected for men of their age. It's quite an interesting uh, finding right there. I mean, I would say that Obama did look a lot older after eight years in office than he did when he started. Um, so... Um, there may be some truth to that. Determining someone's rate of aging and how, how quickly they're aging is, is really difficult to assess. Um, you can look at different parameters of, of someone's uh, body, like their blood pressure, their physical strength, and you can combine these things mathematically with their age um, to give you kind of a predicted age based on their biological attributes of that individual, if that makes sense. But is there another way to predict someone's rate of aging or how old they biologically are that could be more reliable. So there was a study done in this in 1982 um, by a group called Borkin et al. They proposed that it may be possible that the difference between, I'm gonna read this for you, that the difference between visually estimated age and actual age is a useful indicator of biological age in adulthood. So the query that was raised, are those who look old for their stated age biologically older when evaluated in terms of physiological functioning. So in other words, if a 70 year old person looks like he is 50, is he physiologically younger and vice versa? Does that make sense? Are we following what this is saying? So according to the research, the answer seems to be yes. 
biological or intrinsic age can be correlated with physical appearance. So if you look young, you're biologically going to be younger than someone who does not look young. Are we following? So this is a little bit confusing. So the most compelling evidence of this comes from a study. Um, it was a longitudinal study of 1,086 adult males who were receiving annual checkups at the Baltimore Gerontology Research Center. Gerontology is the, uh, the medical uh, field of um, aging or the elderly. And they were looked at over a 20 year period. Now in this research, uh, longitudinal research, uh, they found that those men who looked older visually were indeed found to be biologically order older on the majority of key biological parameters and the younger looking participants actually lived longer. So this is quite a big uh, topic now that I'm opening up and quite a big area of controversy most likely. So is it possible that youthful looks are not only associated with good health, but may also contribute to longevity? So is it possible that appearance can literally become a matter of life and death? If that is the case, and this is the big question, this is the, the billion pound question or billion dollar question. If we artificially change someone's appearance to make them look younger, does the relationship between apparent age and biological age still hold? So for example, if someone who's 60 has a facelift to look like they're 40, do they then biologically seem to be 40 as well? Now, this is something that's not really been looked into as far as I'm aware, but if anyone knows of any studies about this, please let me know. And it's a very interesting question. So it could give a whole new meaning to anti-aging treatments, because not only are you doing it to improve the way you feel about yourself, but conceivably, if you're looking younger, you may also become biologically younger and increase your lifespan. And not only increasing your lifespan, because it's not great just to be old, but frail, but increase the quality of that lifespan. So you'll be healthier for longer as you get older. Um, very interesting question. And it, 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 it raises this whole big issue about should we be stigmatizing uh, people who get anti-aging treatments? Should everyone be getting Botox as a way to help them live a longer, happier lives? Um, is it actually like a medical therapy in that sense? Or is it just vanity? Um, and these are the kind of questions that as a dermatologist who, who deals with people who have anti-aging concerns as well as skin disease, um, you know, I deal with this issue every day. So is doing cosmetic treatments for people to make them look younger actually a medical necessity? I'm not saying it is, but it's a question to throw out there. And some of the evidence suggests that that may be the case. So that's my, uh, my uh, two cents on um, aging gracefully and whether or not we should be stigmatizing uh, anti-aging treatments.